Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukhah HaKwadash, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name in ancient Hebrew, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son, the savior and redeemer of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's Brother Tazawam, uh, coming back with another lesson through the spirit of Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai. Hope Lord, uh, Lord willing is edifying unto the elect. Uh, just going into this topic of um, fear is a, um, is a great motivator, all right? Fear is a great motivator. And... I say that to speak about the fear of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right. And you know, um, mainly, you know, about the fear of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. But even when you think about um, you know, in general, people they they do things out of fear. You know, even, you know, when the time of uh the hour of temptation uh comes, um, people will end up taking that uh, you know, that MOB because they are in fear. You know, uh, Yahweh Shai talked about um, fear not him that can kill the body, all right, but is not able to, um, you know, but after which is not able to, uh, you know, kill the soul, but fear him that can kill both body and soul, all right, and, and hell. You know, a lot of people, Esau, Esau is going to use uh, fear in order to get people to uh, worship him. But guess what? Yahweh, <laughs> Bashim Yahweh Shai, he also, but on the right hand side, all right, in, in, uh, through salvation, all right, um, uses fear, tells you to fear so that you can gain salvation. Now, the thing about it is a lot of people, especially Jake, they love to say, I don't fear nothing but God. But that's not the case at all, because if you had fear of the Most High, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, then you, you would be motivated, all right, to, uh, uh, to please him, to serve him, all right, to do his commandments, you know, and that's why the, the, the true men, all right, of the Lord, and you know, even you know, the sisters as well, the ones who are truly serving the Lord in sincerity and in truth, they're doing that. We're doing that, you know, um, uh, because we fear the Lord, all right, and we fear his judgments. So, this is actually a scripture right here in the book of Psalms 119, verse uh, 20. It says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, I am afraid of thy judgments. Okay, and the scriptures talks about how the Lord. Um, shall be known. Let me get that real quick too. Uh, what was that Psalms the ninth chapter? That the Lord will be known uh, by His judgments. Um, so bear with me one second. There we go. Psalms uh, nine. Psalms nine verse sixteen. It says, "Yahweh is known by the judgment which He executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands." Hegegion Salah. All right. So the Most High, He is uh, is known by His judgments, even from the uh, you know from from the old world. All right. The Lord was known by the judgment of destroying the old world by way of the flood. All right. By way of uh, uh, flooding the earth and saving you know uh, uh, Noah and his in his family. So it, during that time. All right, during the time of you know uh, our exodus out of out of uh, Egypt, all right, the Lord was known by His judgment, and what the and what and that judgment caused Pharaoh and the Egyptians to fear the Lord. All right, let me let me get this too. Here, this is the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter eleven, verse seven. It says, "By faith, being warned of the of the Most High of things not seen as yet." All right, and that th and that word warned. All right, goes into judgment because the Lord, see, the Lord is uh, just and he's uh, uh, he's uh, equal. So before he brings the judgment, all right, he's going to warn you, all right? <laughs> and also, not only not only will the Lord warn you, but he'll also uh, threaten you, okay? And once again, these, yes, the Lord deals with uh, fear tactics, man, you know, and, and it's a, and if you do fear the Lord and you serve him, then you are actually saving, you know, you are, uh, uh, I, let me get that, let me finish this, you actually, uh, um, say, you got, you are actually saving yourself, well, you know, through the fear of the Lord, because it says, being warned of the most high, of the things not seen as yet, 
All right. So the Lord warned him about the flood. He warned him about the destruction that he's going to bring upon the whole earth. And what did that do to Noah? It made him do what? Moved with fear. All right. Noah moved with fear because he was warned of the destruction of the judgment that the Lord is going to bring upon the wicked. So that so that right there is is a, was a great motivation for Noah to do what? Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. You see? So uh, uh, because he moved with fear, because he had fear, he was motivated to prepare an ark. And then that ark, through that fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, caused him to be saved from that first death. All right. And his in his household. It says, by by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Okay? Because it is righteous. See, fear is a motivation, is a great motivator to do righteousness. All right. I should have said that in the beginning. Fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is the greatest or uh the greatest motivator. I say, I would say the greatest motivator to do righteousness. Therefore, through the righteousness, all right, ye shall be saved. All right, through the righteousness of your faith and your fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, that's how you will be uh um you will be saved. Okay, so let's get this. Um there's another scripture, I believe it's Psalms. Lock it. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, let me get this. I think it's Psalm, Psalms one fifteen. If I'm not mistaken. Here we go. Um, Psalm chapter one fifteen. Let me just make sure it's that one that I'm looking for. Yeah. So it's uh, Psalm chapter uh, 115, verse 11. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Okay? So if you fear the Lord, then you're going to trust in the Lord because the Lord is the one that's bringing the, the, uh, the, uh, the judgment. And he also is the one that has the mercy. He's the one that's bringing the, 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 the evil. And he's also the one that can deliver you from the evil. So if you trust in the Lord... Then you're going to do what? You're going to uh, uh, follow what he says to do. You're going to serve him. You're going to keep his commandments, and that will get you to uh, will, will allow you to have that salvation because you're trusting in the Lord as your shield, as your help. All right, uh, verse thirteen. I'm gonna jump there. It says he will he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. So you're going to be blessed. Because you fear the Lord, because that fear is going to motivate you to do his will. It's going to motivate you to serve him. It's going to, and, and, this, and to serve the Lord is to do righteousness. Okay? So that's why fear is, is necessity. Now, to go, go into the scripture, right? Um, go into this in the book of uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 11. It says, The fear of the Lord is honor. And glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. So ultimately, when you fear the Lord, you get honored. You, you get honored. You get glory. All right. You get glad. You get salvation. That's what all that you know leads up into. It says ver the verse uh, verse twelve: The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness and a long life. Why? Because doing what the Lord doing what the Lord says to do, and once again the main way people are motivated to do things is uh really out of fear because when you think about it like for instance somebody could be motivated to do something out of uh you know a, a um out of a uh you know a gift all right somebody tells you oh if you want to if you do this you know i'll reward you i'll give you this i'll give you that now sometimes people could look at that reward and be like oh it's not really that you know uh, i don't really need it you know or I don't really uh, desire that reward, so they might not do something, okay? Um, but if you tell somebody to do something, or if you, uh, yeah, if you tell somebody to do something and they are fearful of you, or they are fearful of the consequences of not doing it, then they're, they're, uh, they're going to be motivated to get that deed accomplished, okay? And as the scripture says, it says, who, 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 should, who uh, can you fear above the most high? All right, there is none. There is none to be feared above the Most High. 
So if the Lord has the the Heavenly Father, all right, the Creator, the uh, the, the the Ancient of Days, all right. If He has a commandment, if He has a uh, a uh, a way of life that He desires you to live, and He has the power to do whatever He pleases with you, uh, uh, to you, infinite, beyond the, the the imagination that you can even think of. Why would you not fear that power? All right. It, it speaks of it. He spoke about that in the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, where he says, fear ye not me, say if the Lord tremble ye not at my word. All right. So let's get this. Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to come back to uh, this right here though, cause, but it's a few, few verses, but let me um, get this in the book of Psalms 89 verse six. It says, for who is in the heaven that can be compared unto Yahweh, who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the, unto Yahweh. There is so the question that's a rhetorical question because there is none. All right, <laughs> that's why he is the Most High. So it says, the power is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. Now, who is the the saints? The ones that made a covenant with him by sacrifice. All right, which is who the the Israelites. The Israelites are supposed to fear the Lord. Really, the whole earth is going to fear the Lord, but. The, earth, the, the, the heathen is going to fear the Lord by way of his judgment, by way of his, uh, um, you know, by way of the judgment that he executed, by way of seeing his power, seeing his might, seeing his majesty. All right. Seeing uh, 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 the, the, his threat, his threatenings come to pass. But the but uh, but the saints, we were supposed to fear the Lord because of, you know, uh, 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 because of his commandments, you know, because of uh, uh, our our willingness to serve and fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But you got a lot of our, our people that don't fear the Lord because of his word. All right. Don't fear the Lord because of his word. And therefore, the fear must come by way of his action. See, all at the end, at the end of it all, all is going to fear the most high. Bashim Yahweh Shah. Okay. All is going to fear the Lord. And we're going to, and we're going to, um, you know, I have a scripture to prove that as well. Uh, but reading on to this, it says, Power is greatly to be feared uh, in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. All right, let's, let's go into this word reverence. Let's see what that says. Uh, to be feared, to be uh, revered, afraid, stand in awe of, to be feared, reverence, honor, respect. And that's what's, you know, that's what the Lord is going to do, man. That's what the second, you know, the 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 the, the second coming of Yahweh Shai, the end of this age, all right, the uh, the uh all the all the plagues that the Lord is sending out, and ultimately the second death, that that's what's going to cause the whole world to be uh to respect and fear and to be in astonishment and awe of the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? And that is going to be instilled in the earth. For uh, everlasting, man. Let me see something. Terrible acts. I just want to see what. Yeah. See, and here's another one. Uh, Psalms 145, verse 6. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. All right. And what is the, what is the acts that men are going to speak of? Jeremiah 16 and 16 tells you that, man. Through the salvation of the elect. The world is going to fear. Even the the elect is going to fear in that day as well. But we see we fear right now. We fear the we tremble at the word of the Lord, and that right there is is what is accounted as righteousness by faith, because we are we have faith that the Lord is uh, is going to accomplish His word. All right, and that's why the scripture says, "Through the terror of the Lord we persuade men," because we have faith that the words that the Lord has spoken from the beginning will come to pass, will come to fruition. So it says, and men shall speak of thy might, of thy terrible acts. And that's why in the kingdom, the, the, the destruction of Babylon the Great is going to be talked about. All right. That's why it says, Jeremiah 16, verse 16, no more shall they be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of the Lord, out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of the north. You know, that's what's going to be talked about. And it's going to be through the fear, all right, through the reverence. All right, of the acts of the power that the Lord has, uh, per, uh you know, has a uh, uh, has a uh, portrayed or displayed, I should say, displayed amongst all living things that 
that fear is going to be everlastingly instilled in the world. Okay. And through that fear, oh, oh, let's, let's get it. Um, let's go back here. So, and through that fear of that, um, of Yahweh Shai, okay, in, in the, that second death, this is what's going to happen. So, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. It says that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee shall bow. In th of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Yahweh Shahamashiach is Lord, to the glory of of God the Father. So to the glory of of Yahweh the Father. Okay. Now people don't bow. All right. Uh. uh to to a, a a king. You know. People don't bow out of. You know. Uh, um. How would you say? People bow out of respect, reverence, and fear. You know, just to make it plain, all right. That's the that's what motivates people to bow to a king. So if people will bow, you know, uh, uh you know, let's say the the king of Saudi Arabia, whatever, people uh bow to him because they fear his his power, what he can what he can do to them. But the whole entire earth, as it just said here, things in heaven except Yahweh, all right. Things in the earth, things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess. Okay, so every living thing uh, beside Yahweh is going to bow to Yahweh shot, and that's going to be by because of fear. All right, and that fear is going to go back, and ultimately, that fear of Yahweh shot is going to ultimately go back to the glory of who Yahweh, because Yahweh is the one who set up Yahweh shot, and Yahweh shot is coming to do the will of his father. So, all is going to confess. In uh um and bow to Yahweh Shai, and that glory is gonna go to Yahweh. And and that's how all is going to fear the Lord. That's what's gonna be the motivator. Verse 12: Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, that's there it goes. What is the motivating factor? of salvation fear okay that's what shall motivate you man and and you've seen the the uh uh the uh, uh accounts of jonah okay when jonah didn't want to go preach to, to uh, nineveh what did the lord do the lord did a fear tactic he swallowed him he put him in, a, in the belly of a fish okay and jonah said he was in hell and, Je and and jonah had fear at that moment you see um paul i got the account of paul when Paul was doing what he before he was uh before he was converted while he was Saul, right here, Acts nine verse one it says, "And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem." And as he and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said unto and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I and this is Yahweh Shai, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now this is the conversation, and you see what happened to uh to Saul, right? Now what what uh um emotion did I give Saul? Okay, it says verse six, and and he trembling and astonished said, You see, be that what what happened, what Yahweh Shai did unto Paul made Paul what tremble and astonished. He was afraid. Said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? See, he was motivated. Like, what do you want? For, like, what do you want me to do? How? Uh, how could? Like, well, I'm, he was afraid. He was shook. He was scared. He was he, all that, man. So at that moment, Paul, he was just out before this in verse one. He was the one that was uh, putting people, you know, making people afraid, threatening and slaughtering the the, the disciples of the Lord, whether they be uh, men or women. But when Yahweh Shai appeared, all right, in the, in the scriptures, it says only his voice appeared because it was just a light. But the voice of the Lord. Uh, made Paul uh, 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 afraid, man, made him to tremble. So that right there, that's why I tell, tells you, um, what is that, in the book of Revelation, the first chapter, 
It says what? And his voice sounds like, you know, many, uh, many waters. That's a, a fearful, you know, uh, uh, um, a fearful noise, man, that his voice sound sounded. It says, and he said, um, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will that have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go to the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, what happened when, you know, if you keep reading, what happened? <laughs> Paul went to the city. He uh, got, you know, he uh, didn't eat for, you know, he had his, he didn't eat or drink for three days. Didn't have sight for three days. And then after that, Paul was converted and started teaching Yahweh Shai. But what motivated him to do that? It wasn't, you know, through a reward. It wasn't because, you know, Yahweh Shai begged him. And no, Yahweh Shai scared him, man. You know, he had that, that, um, that TV show. Back in the day, where they would take badass kids, you know, that was in high school or middle school, or whatever, to jails, to jails, um, to to basically scare them. It was called what? Scared straight. You see, <laughs> that's what, and that's what Yahweh Shai would do to his to his elect, man. He would scare them straight. Okay, but the the rest, you're going to be scared into into destruction, man. All right, you're going to be scared into destruction. But the but the elect, you have to have that fear of the Lord in order to, to you know walk upright. Let's get that. Um, Psalms 25, verse 12. It says, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. So the ones who fear the Lord, that's who the Lord, you know, fear the Lord through the words that he spoke, that he speaks. That's who the Lord is going to teach in the way that he chooses. All right. Verse 13. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth because when you are now taught of the ways of your, of righteousness, you are now at ease, man. You are comforted, okay? Because that's the Lord, you know, bringing, you know, that balance, you know, uh, of you fear him, but he will also take care of you. He will also help you. He will also guide you, okay? And that's why the Lord say, you know, uh, uh, um, that you don't have to fear anything, you know, fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Because if you fear, if you fear Yahweh, then you don't, there's no need to fear anything else because Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, controls everything else that could potentially give you uh, that could potentially give you fear. So there's no need to, to fear Esau. There's no need to fear death. There's no need to fear, you know, uh animals. There's no need to fear anything. If you have the fear of the Lord uh on you, man. Because the Lord is the one that's going to protect you and provide for you and be your your, your shield and buckler. Reading on, it says verse 14. The secret of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Okay? So that's why the ones who, the prophets, the scripture tells you that um, he will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets until he serves the prophets. Why? Because the prophets fear the Lord, and, it, and, and they show their fear by their works, by them, you know, sacrificing, you know, their life, hazarding their life for for the gospel's sake, because that's what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has commanded us to do. See, the 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 elect, they don't even they don't they don't even fear losing their life because of the fear that they have for the most high. Their life itself, their breath itself is not worth more, is not worth uh a more uh, uh losing than the fear that the Lord has instilled in them. And that right there is is what the Lord is looking for, man. That right there is is what the Lord seeks. That's why Yahweh Shai said that. You know, he that does, doesn't deny, you know, his own life is not worthy of him. Because that means that you fear losing your life more than you fear the the uh, will and the commandment and the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, so let's get um let's go back to this now. Close this out. Close that out too. Um yeah, so uh, back in Sirach, uh, chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Whosoever feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. Okay, so once again, fear is the more, it, the, 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 the fear in the Lord is, a, is the motivating, is, a, is the greatest motivating uh, uh, factor for righteousness and that righteousness that you obtain by fearing the Lord will will get you to uh, find favor and will get you to find uh, it will go well with you uh, at the last, you know, in, in his last days. Verse 14, to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It was created with the faithful in the womb. See, fear 
was created with the faithful. Faithful and fear of Yahweh go hand in hand. You can't be faithful and not fear. And you cannot fear. You cannot say you are fearful. I mean, so like you cannot say that you fear the Lord, but do not uh, have faith in the Lord. They are both. They both go simultaneously together. All right. Through your faith, through your fear, you are faithful. And that faith, through that faith, you do the works. Verse uh, 15. Uh, actually, let me jump. I'm going to jump because I just want to you know, speak on the fear. Verse 18, it says, the fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom. Why? Because when you fear the Lord, you fear his judgments, you fear his word. What do you do? You Now, try, now you uh, uh, study his word. You know, you go, you get, uh, you know, you get involved and in, in, in indulge in what is what he deems is is right, what he deems is just, what he deems is righteousness, and that right there gives you wisdom because you use that knowledge that you have gained through through the fear that you have uh, uh, had in the Lord. Okay, then you search His Word, you seek out His face, and you use that knowledge to now uh, uh, um, walk a certain way. And that walk in a certain way, you're applying that knowledge, which is what wisdom. Wisdom is the is wisdom is the application of knowledge and understanding. But that comes from what? Fear in the Lord. It says, the fear of the Lord is a crown of, of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are gifts of the Most High. And it enlargeth their rejoicing that loveth that love him. Wisdom reigneth down the skill and knowledge of understanding, standing uh, and, exalted, uh, and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. The root of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and the and the branches thereof are long life. Okay, so the root of wisdom, how wisdom is in created, is by what fear of the Lord, man. Okay, and you need you need to understand the importance of fear. Once again, like I said before, people always talk about they fear the Lord, but their actions sh says completely opposite. Because if you fear the Lord, you will have wisdom, and wisdom is what. The application of the knowledge and understanding of the commandments of the Lord. That is true wisdom. It's not this world's wisdom. All right. It's not knowing, you know, E equals MC squared. It's not knowing how to turn a thousand into a million. All right. A million into a billion. It's not knowing uh, physics. Okay. Uh, uh, a neuroscientist. None of that, man. The fear, the wis true wisdom is the knowledge, is the is applying the knowledge and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But you can only get that if you truly fear the Lord. All right. And through that application, wisdom, you would do what? You obtain long life. Ultimately, it's going to be through the fear of the Lord, we're going to get immortality. Okay. It says, the fear of the Lord driveth away sins. There goes that motive, that motivation right there. Okay. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins. That makes you what makes you uh, uh um doing doing righteousness, doing the things that are just, being being upright. Why? Because you fear the judgment of the Lord. You fear what the Lord will do to you. Going on, it says, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. All right, so let's get a couple more. We close it out. Uh, Psalms. Uh, so like Isaiah sixty one. 66 verse 1 it says thus saith yahweh the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool where is the house that ye build unto me and where is the place of my rest for all those things have my hand made and all those things have and it's like and all those things have been saith the lord but to this man will i look meaning what he he will have respect it says, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. All right. And, and, and poor is talking about humble, not actually being physically poor, but uh, being humble. It says, and trembleth at my word. So that's who the Lord is looking looking for. That's who the Lord is going to, as we read you know, before, he's going to uh, teach the way that he chooses. Is the ones that truly trembles at his word. Because that's that's true fear. Okay. And that's what you should. If a, if a power... That says what? That heaven is, is his throne and the earth is his footstool? If a power is telling you to do something that the earth is his footstool, then just the simple, his simple words 
should be fearful enough for you to to uh to to act, man. Just like a child, when where a parent, you know, especially like a young child, a toddler, when a parent has instilled fear in that child, the parent shouldn't really need to have to beat the child. Shouldn't really need to have to uh you know uh alt- you know always beat the child. I should say because the words that the um that the that the parent is saying should be enough to make the child afraid. Okay, so how much more the 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 words of the the father of spirits, man? His words alone is what is what is what should uh, uh be the factor of you fearing. But most people, like I said before, most people say that they I, I don't fear nothing but God. But you don't if you really feared the Most High, if you really feared the Creator, then you would actually be doing what He has commanded you to do. But most people do the complete opposite. Why? Because they don't fear the Lord. But he's going to bring that fear, okay? He's going to bring the fear, man. The king of terrors, okay? Great and terrible is his is, is his is, is his acts. He's going to bring the fear, man, to the point where everybody is going to fear the Lord, man. Everybody's going to be motivated, okay, to, to serve the Lord. And that's going to be by way of the fear that he instills on this earth, man. And that's going to be a great and terrible day. That's why the scripture told you about that. The great and terrible day of the Lord. Because that day is going to be the day where everybody fears. The elect are going to be saved from the, the acts that he's going to do to make people fear. And that's what we are cons- con- constantly, you know, uh, trying to uh, make our call in the election sure right now. But everybody is going to fear. Every living being is going to fear in that day by the acts that the Lord is going to accomplish, man. Okay, let's get this last one. Revelation chapter 15, verse um, 3. It says, and they sang the song of Moses. Actually, we start at uh, the top. Start at the top. It says, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the last seven plagues. See, that's the that's the, that's the the threatenings. All right, I believe it's in, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Is that second Ezra's? Because I said that the Lord... Uh, threatens man well i didn't say it. the scripture says that the lord threatens um where are we at here we go i'm gonna start at uh, second edge chapter 16 verse uh, 10 it says and he shall cast lightnings and who shall not fear he shall thunder and who shall not be afraid the lord threateneth threatened and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence Okay, <laughs> so these things that we're reading right here, these plague, these last plagues, that's the that's the uh, the threatenings that the Lord was well, not even a threat at that point. It's the that's the that's the fruition of the threatenings that the Lord said that he was going to do at the end of this age. So it says for in them is filled up the raft of power. Fear. All right. That's the that the fearful acts that the Lord is going to put on this earth. All right. Through his through his wrath. It says, and I saw as it were. A sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of power. Why? Because the ones that got the victory over the beast, they didn't fear the beast. They didn't fear what the beast, the, 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 they didn't fear the threatenings of the beast. They feared the threatenings of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. They didn't fear that the beast was, a uh, 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 um, you know, Put some of them to death, all right? Because they're going to be some martyrs. They, they didn't fear that the beast threatened their their uh, comfortability, threatened their livelihoods, threatened you know their their uh, name, all right? Uh, defamed them. None of these things. They didn't fear none of that, okay? Because the beast, which is the system, which is ran by Esau, Edom, okay? He wants you to fear him, and to the point where you work. Because when you when you fear somebody, you're going to worship. You're going to if you fear something, you're going to worship it, okay? So the so Esau Edom through his through his uh mark, all right, the 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 chip, all right, through this system, he's going to try, he wants to get get the world to worship him through fear tactics. But the ones who get the who got the victory over the beast, they got the victory over the beast because they feared, they didn't fear the beast, they feared Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, and his judgment. So reading on, it says verse three, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God. In the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord Power Almighty, Almighty. See that right there? His title shows you why you should fear him. Yahweh uh, Power Almighty. 
Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? Who? Where? Who is not going to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai at the last, man? Okay? <laughs> who is not going to fear after the Lord has filled up his wrath and displayed it uh, 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 on a, uh, in heaven, in the heavens and earth? Who is not going to fear it? Every, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That's what's going to happen, man. Fear is the greatest motive, is the motivating factor, you know, to righteousness. You can fear now or you can fear later. But all in all, you fearing later is going to be by way of pain, wrath, destruction, indignation of the Lord. Okay, you fear now is to what? Working out your salvation, all right? It's, it's, it's to the working of your salvation, I should say. But, I, but all in all, all shall fear. So it says, who shall not fear, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thou judgments are made manifest. Okay? All nations are going to worship before Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai because why? His judgments are made manifest. His threatenings were made manifest. His indignation have been manifested. Okay? His wrath has been manifested. And that's and that's what it's you know that's what it ultimately comes down to, man. So you know um, I end it there. Hey, man, fear the Lord, man, because with that fear, that, that fear is a motive is a motivator. It's gonna motivate you to serve Him, to uh, uh, to do His to, to to do His will, to have to be faithful, and ultimately that's working towards your salvation. All right, so you know with that, call Lord Yahweh Bashim El Shai Bashim Rakakudash. Double honor to the apostle of Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutation, blessings to the house of David, which is the, which is the elect. Till next time, Shalom.